Welcome Rachel. Kia ora, hello. What a lovely, lovely, lovely welcome. So I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to be here today to speak to you about a project that's very close to my heart. And I'll look forward to going through this presentation in about 10 to 15 minutes where I'll describe the program for you and share some of our preliminary findings to date, some of the reflections that we've had, and hopefully describe for you where we're aiming to go as we move through. So the blogging project that I'm here to talk to you about today is called the Summer Learning Journey. So this is a project and a journey that I started in November of last year. So I was hired by the Wolf Fisher Research Center and uh, had the opportunity to come on board for two years to develop an intervention and a program that would happen over our holiday period. So as many of you know, a lot of our children are struggling when they finish school at the end of one year. They're not engaging a huge amount in some of our reading and some of our writing over that holiday period and then are coming back at the beginning of the next year, struggling a bit to maintain or retain a lot of those wonderful skills that they developed with their teachers the year before. So my job is really to find some way of engaging our children in the digital sphere, particularly with their writing, over the holiday period. Now before I describe the program for you in more depth, and chat about our findings, I did just want to take a minute to introduce myself. The beauty of this program, and I think a key to the success of this program, is about personal relationships. And unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to meet everyone in person, so I just wanted to take a minute to do that now. I've chosen to do that using uh, Pepeha. I've chosen to do that because there's quite a personal connection for me. I actually originally married into a large, extended Maori family, and it's that connection that actually brought me to New Zealand. So I have one son named Arunui, who's six years old, and a very proud Canadian Kiwi. So in honor of him, he's tried to help me with my pronunciation. I'll apologize as a Canadian with not great pronunciation, but I'll do my very best to um, honor our Toreo Maori ancestors. Ko Gatno Te Maunga, Ko Mississippi Te Awa, Ko James Telford Sterling Toku Tipuna, Ko Williamson Sterling Toku Iwi, Ko Williamson Toku Hapu, No Elmont Canada Aho. Ko Ron Rao, Ko Leslie Okumatua, Ko Rachel Allison Williams, Toku Inua. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last night I had Arunui going, Mama, one more time, you almost got it. <laughs> so I can see him cheering. I did just want to take a minute as well just to introduce myself professionally, because I am speaking to you now as an educational researcher, but I'm actually first and foremost a teacher. So I trained as a secondary school science teacher and health and PE teacher in Canada. I then taught in Japan, in England, and in Switzerland before moving back to Canada and undertaking postgraduate study, as many of you here have done the same. So my master's degree is in public health, and that's where I learned a lot about program design, implementation, and evaluation, and that's what I'll be speaking to you about today. I brought that with me to the University of Auckland, and I completed my doctorate a couple of years ago where I actually evaluated the Kiwi Camp program. So that's a program I think operating in a lot of your schools. I took a look at the program on a national level, looked at how it was being implemented, and I evaluated the impact that it had on the social health of a lot of our young people. And at the end of that, had an opportunity to stay at the University of Auckland and work in the Wolf Fisher Research Center. This brings me to my wonderful job that I absolutely love. <laughs> so I have this job creating a blogging program it's called the Summer Learning Journey. It runs over two years. To date, I've run two pilot studies of this program. Essentially, I'm responsible for designing the program, advertising it, implementing it, monitoring it, and evaluating it. So each phase of the process. I'm responsible ultimately, though, to our children, and of course to you as teachers and administrators. Ultimately, my goal is to help reduce or attenuate the drop that we're seeing in literacy scores over the summer. And I'm trying to do that by engaging our children in a program that they like to participate in, that they're engaging with, and that hopefully we're gonna see some positive impact. I've created, with these two pilot versions, one for the summer, so it happened in January of this year, and one for the winter. So not being wildly creative, I went from summer learning journey to winter learning journey but we've created these two programs with slightly different themes. So the Summer Learning Journey program was about travel and adventure, 
the Winter Learning Journey Program about the Olympics. Both of these programs have been evaluated. We've looked at the impact that participating in a blogging program can have on student literacy scores. And then we've also just taken a look at, do the children enjoy the program? How frequently are they using it? And what sort of learning can we take away in terms of developing the next iteration of the program? So the first version, travel and adventure using the idea of learn, create, share. We had year three to eight participants from three of our Manaya Kalani cluster schools. It was 15 different days worth of activities with three activities a day that the students could choose from. So they were able to pick and choose from any activity that interested them. They could do the activities in any order and at any time over that summer holiday period. Each time they completed an activity, they posted up on their blog and I returned a comment. So this I did for every single student. Every single blog that was posted received a comment back from me. They also received comments from students across the world. So because of the travel theme and because of the opportunities I've had to work in other countries, I recruited students from five countries around the world to blog back with our students. I gave our students the opportunity to choose one of those five countries and for this program they imagined traveling there. So they packed their suitcase, they bought their airline ticket, they hopped on the airplane, and off they went to learn about the people, the customs, and the culture of those countries. So it was really fabulous to see as they were learning, they were getting feedback from people actually living in those countries who were the same age. So we had the hopefully expert <laughs> commenting feedback from myself, and then of course our peer-to-peer -peer commenting from um, our overseas students. So for this program, we had 50 students who registered and we had 23 who actively participated, 12 of whom were male and 11 who were female. The results were pretty exciting. What we saw in only three weeks was about 261 blog posts from only 23 students. I returned, as I said, each one, so there were another 261 comments. Our overseas students blogged an additional 128 comments, and some of our students started to engage in peer-to-peer -peer commenting, which was just great to see, posting an additional 43. So at the end of January of 2016, we had about 693 <coughs> active blog posts. What this means for our students. Happily for our students, I'm sorry about the nature of this graph, I'm still very new to, to the Google platform and created it on PowerPoint initially. But essentially, the important thing, and hopefully what I can show, is the difference between our students who participated in our program and our students who didn't. So what I did at the end of our program was to take a look at EASTL scores. We wanted to know whether those students who did actively blog realized a benefit. Is there a point to actively being engaged over the summertime? And what we found, by looking at this graph, the darker blue line is gonna represent the students who participated. The lighter green line represents students who didn't participate. And what I did for this um, particular analysis is I created what's called a matched control group. So essentially I took our 23 students who participated and created a second group of 23 students from the same schools who were the same age, same gender, same ethnicity, and they had the same baseline EASTL score. In other words, at the end of the preceding year, they had exactly the same literacy score on their EASTL tests. Then I took a look at what happened after summer, so after participation. Was there a difference in the, in the EASTL scores? And what we saw was a marked and dramatic difference. So students who participated in our program did experience a slight drop in their literacy test scores, but it was not a significant drop. This is huge. This is for a group of students who are often realizing a really dramatic slump or slide. Our students actually relatively maintained their learning from the year before. If we take a look at the students who didn't choose to participate for a variety of reasons, this is the long, dark drop. So what we see is a dramatic and significant difference between our students at the beginning of the year, so in other words, after having participated. So this suggested to us that there's there's an impact. There's something that's happening within our students that suggests that being active over the summer holiday is beneficial. So we went ahead and on the back of that created the Winter Learning Journey program. Theme was Olympics. We had six schools participating, year four to eight. And in this case, we don't have EASTL data. 
So the real purpose of this particular program was really just to raise the profile a little bit of the program, chat about it a little bit more, and hopefully just continue the momentum that had been gained through the summer learning journey. When we take a look at whether or not that was achieved, did we raise the profile, did we increase some understanding of the program and hopefully motivate our children to participate? The short answer is yes, hopefully we really have done that. So what we'll see is on the left hand side, this is participation for the winter learning journey. So this was July of this year compared to our summer learning journey which was in January. So we doubled the number of schools, we went from three to six, so a two-fold increase. Then we saw, instead of 50 students registering, 257 students registered for the program. We went from 23 active participants to 138. So we increased six-fold the number of children engaging in blogging in an active way over the holiday period. Some of these students, in fact, quite a number, didn't bring netbooks home. So these are students that actively found a way to blog and be a part of our program over the holiday period. They went to libraries, they went to families' houses, they did what they could to be part, so we're just thrilled that they joined us. When we look at their activity, the rate's pretty amazing. They logged for two full weeks, as much as possible. Up when we didn't recognize me by the end, I just sort of disappeared into the abyss for the two weeks, but it was a genuine joy. It was a genuine joy. The students did such a great job. And so at the end, we can actively say, summer we had 693 active posts and comments. We had 2,651 in the winter. So almost a four-fold increase in what our students are doing. As a researcher, and certainly as a teacher and a mother, this is just such a wonderful opportunity to share this news with you, because it is just so exciting. It's so exciting to see this engagement. And what you'll see, hopefully up here on the screen, what comes through mostly is a picture of myself with Panmure Bridge school students. As part of this program, I have the opportunity to go back to each school who actively participated and celebrate. We celebrate the success of every single child who participates. They get their own personalized certificate. They get their own online badge that goes on their personal blog site. And we have prizes for our top bloggers. So given the Olympics as a theme for the winter, we had gold, silver, and bronze medal winners, and each child that earned a prize got a number of sort of food and other basic items related to the notion of the Olympics. And I got to go back and hand them out, and uh, in many cases, we just had a wonderful celebration for these students. Once that period had ended, I went back to my office and reflected and said, what can we learn from this and how can we move forward? So essentially, I just wanted to share with you briefly what we've learned and where we'll be going next. Essentially, I tried to use the learn, create, share framework in all that I do. I recognize what you as teachers do. I think what you do is amazing. And I just want to continue that through the holiday period. I want to make sure that what I'm doing matches and meshes as much as possible with what you're doing so the students have a consistent experience. I also want to make sure that I get out to each school and I personally visit every single classroom. So when I have the opportunity, I love to come into the school, I love to meet the kids, chat about the program, answer questions, and that does seem to be helping with raising, um, just generally profiling this, this particular program. With content, I'm trying to offer a huge range. I'm trying to make sure we hit on everything that our students might enjoy engaging with, and I'm trying to make sure that there's lots of choice, and that does seem to be working. Interestingly, our children, in terms of both versions of the blogging program, seem to really like the activities where they're asked to rate or rank things, where they're asked for their opinion, where they're asked to engage in sort of basic research, and where they're asked to have an opportunity to reflect critically on some piece of information. In this winter learning journey version, I asked the children to think about what inspired them. The, the responses were beautiful and amazing. They wrote gorgeous accounts of people that inspired them. They posted pictures, they made videos. They, of course, also were talking about sports. So I have lots of great pictures of students being archers and running track and field and all decked out as cyclists, biking down the road and racing each other and just really, really cool activities to see them engaging with. I do think, though, the major success of this program comes down to the commenting feature, something that we've been talking about already quite a bit today. How do we engage our fauna? How do we engage our other teachers? 
how to engage it, just generally our students in commenting and providing support. So I'm certainly quite cognizant of that and I will definitely be looking at how I can support that and how we can build that into our next version. I'm also looking at how I can make sure there's access. I'm quite cog cognizant of the fact that not um, all children do bring their netbooks home and that and when they do, sometimes they get lost or stolen or broken or various things happen to them. So I am working very closely with the local community as well as the local librarians to make sure that they're aware of this program and that they are happy to support all students who want to use the library over the holiday period. Lastly, I did just want to reiterate the importance of acknowledging the schools and the students and I'll continue in that vein for the next version. So in the last slide, I just wanted to give you a sense of where we're going now. We're going to do the Summer Learning Journey 2.0. So that this coming December, January, I'm going to keep with the travel and adventure theme. I warmly invite all Manaya Kalani English medium schools in Auckland to participate in this program. To date, we've had seven of our 10 English medium schools participate. I would love to bring that number up to 10. And I must, at the same time, apologize because the program is in English. And this is the only reason that schools who do not use English as a medium at this stage have not been contacted about the program. I'm, I'm working on my pronunciation of Toreo Māori, but I have to say the writing is a whole other step and the commenting. So we will get there. It's on the horizon, but it's, we're just not there yet. So we're keeping with English. As well, I'm aware of the importance of the connection and the personal relationship. And so at this stage, we haven't approached our outreach schools either to discuss this program that something is something as well for down the track. I will pledge to create a four week program this year. So there will be 60 activities that children can pick from. I will very happily visit each and every school for as long as you're willing to have me to chat about this program. I will also create advertisements in various languages. I know um, Karen Belt was talking about creating commenting in different languages and I really recognize as well the importance of advertising and allowing our Fano to hear about this program in a language that it may be a native language in the home. I'm also going to create a comprehensive commenting network, I'm calling it. So I will be commenting, I will be online every day. I've already apologized to my family for Christmas. And they'll get me for kind of a couple of days, but otherwise I'll be online. We're going to hire two university students with a background in literacy, learning and education to support this program. I'm also going to hire former program participants. And I did this in the winter. We had Willie from Tamaki Primary and Issa Sally from Point England who came on board and joined me in commenting. And that seemed to work quite well. And both boys have indicated their interest in continuing. So we'll keep doing that. I'm also going to continue to encourage our students to blog and incentivize that blogging by awarding points for our individuals who do provide our thoughtful, our helpful and positive comments. I'm going to recruit overseas students from at least five of our other countries again, and I'm going to encourage any FANO members and teachers. But I've put a nice asterisk beside teachers because as a teacher, I know what it's like when it comes to the end of the year. So this is not an expectation by any means that you would be involved. I know you need a break. Absolutely. And that really I see as my job is to give you that break and to take over for you while you enjoy some quality time with your friends and family. Lastly, I'll pledge to acknowledge again, as I have done before, everyone who's participated. There will be prizes for the bloggers as well as prizes for the most active class this year. So at this stage, I'd just really like to thank you for, for the time and for allowing me to present this program to you. It's one I really believe is only working because it's being so actively supported by you as teachers and as schools. And I'm really excited about the next phase and sharing the results with you this time next year. Thank you.